Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play The Deed. The Deed is a adventure RPG murder mystery game, which can be played through pretty fast, but has a multitude of endings. So I'm really excited. It was recommended to me, and I'm really curious to see what this game is about and to see if we can solve maybe the murder mystery. Let's start a new game. Let's jump right into it. I'm playing this blind. I have no idea. And I hope I'm not going to completely ruin everything. Uh, we're going to play the intro because I want to know what's going on. Uh, okay, thank you. That That's helpful. Scotland, November 1945. Oh, my. I My name is Aaron Bruce, son of Malcolm Bruce and rightful heir to Dunshill House. I have recently discovered that my tyrant of a father intends to inherit me in favor of my deranged younger sister. Doesn't hurt me. Oh, that, that makes more sense. My relationship with my family is strained, to say the least. I have decided that the time has come for my sister to be removed from this ghastly equation. I intend to put her out of her misery. Unfortunately, my sister never leaves the confines of Dunshill House, which makes me the matter more complicated. I have not visited the family home in quite some time. I can't bear to be in that hellhole for too long. I my presence on the night of my father's 50th birthday will cause no suspicion. I must choose the timing and method of the deed very carefully. Tonight is the night. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Okay. Have, have we arrived? Oh, what a, what, a, what a lovely day. The perfect day for murder mystery. Oh, I'm not controlling this. Can, can I walk now? Bloody hell, George, who has been responsible for maintaining the gardens? George, you're the worst. Used to be the big Jax Willis, sir. He's been dead for almost a year now. I do a little here and there. Can't do much on account of my bad bag, though. My sister hasn't offered you to help, then. Miss Jennifer isn't really the outer type, sir. I know, George, it was a joke. Very funny, sir. Let's go inside before the ocean comes to Dunshiel. Homecoming. Converse with your relatives and search the house for useful objects. Objects are divided into two categories, items of evidence and weapons. You will only be allowed to pick up two objects from around the house before dinner commences, so choose wisely. After dinner, you will have to ch the chance to plant an item of evidence if you wish and then commit the murder. There are many ways to do the deed, but only the cunning will succeed. Okay, good. Let's see if we can find something of use. I kind of figured I would have brought something of my own. Good evening, Mr. Aaron. May I take your coat? Uh, I would rather keep my coat only if I can- <laughs> Only if I can take your dress! Yes! Certainly, my dear, but only if I can take your dress. Mr. Aaron, that's no way to talk to a lady. Mr. Aaron was just making a little joke, George. It's fine, but he can talk to- It's fine, George. Go away, George. Please let me take your coat. Alright. You're new, aren't you? Sophia is my name. I recognize you from your pictures, Mr. Aran. I'm not new exactly. I've been employed by your family for almost a year. It's just that you've never been visiting before. I've been busy. I don't get along with my family. Offended? Just what are you trying to say? I don't get along with my family. My family and I have not always been on the best of terms. I'm sure you're aware. I might have heard a few things which gave me that impression. I hope that's all in the past now at least. You are here now and I'm sure you're eager to meet with the others. Your father's in the library on your left and your mother is on the parlor, which is on your right. Your sister's upstairs in the room, I think. Thank you. And where can I find you, my pretty? Let's keep- yeah, let's do that. <laughs> well, what if I want to join you for some pleasant company? Oh, I am- um, I will be in the kitchen preparing dinner. I'll sound the bell when the dinner is served. Well, that, that didn't go too well. So now we can look around this house. Fantastic. You recall this old grandfather clock very well from your childhood. You used to believe that it ever stopped ticking. Time itself might stop moving. Okay. Let's check out what's going on in this room. Good question. Oh, even now the familiar musty smell of your father's library fills you with your dread. As you step inside, you have too many bad memories of this room. Oh, lovely. Who's that? Is that daddy? Hello, father. Your father remains silent for several moments and a chill seems to pass through the library. When he finally speaks, it's in a quiet and bitter tone. You told me you'd never enter this house again, boy. Why are you here? Uh, to see you, of course, father. Happy birthday. <laughs> to discuss the inheritance, I know everything. Or that is none of your concern. Ooh, sick. My reason for being here on my own. Oh, really? In other words, there's no purpose at all to your visit. You could at least be happy to see me, father. You know how to make me happy. Move back to Dunshill. Take your proper place and do your damn duty. You have to let me live my own life. I refuse to move back here and suffer your abuse. I will consider it if my p sister is put into care. 
Ooh, okay. If I were to move back to Dunchill, I would have certain expectations. Oh, and what expectations would those be? Firstly, I refuse to suffer your daily insults. You will need to learn to be more decent towards me. Secondly, I want my sister to be put into care where she belongs. I cannot live with her insanity for another day. You would like that, wouldn't you, you obnoxious little shit? Selling out your own blood? These are my terms. Well, you know what you can do with your terms? The nerve of you. You're the same snot-based brat you always were, boy. Obviously, I didn't give you enough discipline as a child. <sighs> if you can't be civil, I will take my leave. Oh, you beat me plenty, I remember. Perhaps you're the one who needs some discipline. Like that. You should watch your words, old man. I'm not as helpless as I used to be. Maybe not on the outside. On the inside, you're every bit as small and weak as always. Don't think for a moment that you could stand against me. You're not man enough and you never will be. You better leave this room before I decide to revisit the past. Get out of here. Oh, dog. Hi, doggy. Your father's best friend, a hunting dog named Beastie. The dog looks at you for a moment then walks away when it realizes you have no food. Get away, boy. The chair's for the dog. Oh, you, screw you, dad. Screw you. What's going on over there? That's a... Uh... Secretary, when your father isn't looking, you quietly open the top drawer of the desk and take a look inside. It seems to be filled with memorabilia. One of the items sends a shiver for your bones. The cruel leather tars your father used to beat you with when you were a child. Perhaps if you plan it in the right place, it might raise questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, take the leather tars. Yes. Remember, you can only pick up two items. Yes, I'm sure. You get the tars, the texture of which brings back unpleasant memories. You quickly hide it in your person to close the drawer. Well, father, I will leave you be. I will leave you be now. Now I have some evidence that I can, I assume, plant against my father. Fantastic. That's all I want. All I really want. The wooden side table is currently empty. Well, okay. Good, good, good to know. Then, um, hmm. Is that a kitchen? Might be. Let's see. Walk into the pantry. You begin to salivate at the promising scent of roast beef coming from the kitchen beyond. Hmm. That does sound good, doesn't it? Okay, what do we have? In here, you find nothing of particular interest among the items in this cabinet or the pantry. There's nothing notable about this barrel. Okay, let's go into the kitchen and say hi to her new flame. Hey there. Oh, I see a knife. Oh, hello, Mr. Aaron. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, I want to ask you something about your time here. I'm sure you can do lots of things for me, lovely. You know what? Let's... So smooth. So smooth. Yes, there's something you can do for me. You can pucker up those pretty lips of yours and give me a kiss. Mr. Aaron, please, this is highly inappropriate. I can't get you fired, you know. Jesus! Don't pretend like you don't enjoy the attention. You're right, I apologize. I'm sorry I must have misread the situation. I thought perhaps you wanted to have some fun. It's it's quite alright, Mr. Aaron. These things happen. I'm sorry I must get back to work now. I will ring the bell when dinner is ready. Okay. I mean, one could try. Okay, we got a knife here. Let's have a look. You don't think you will be needing any bread. Well, I'm looking at the knife. I could pick that up. But first, let's let's say hi to little sis. Oops, sorry. Wrong wrong door. Let's let's go up again. Uh, I gotta see my sister. I mean, I think that's my target. So I might as well go and see her. Uh, where would she be? Okay, we've got a big open room with some... Oh, interesting items in here. An assortment of family records and heirlooms are contained within this ornate glass cabinet. Good to know. Hmm. Oh, why why is everything so dark? Oh my! Uh, I I don't don't know. Of course you do. Use that head for once, boy. What flashback? Great Uncle Thomas? <sighs> what initials do you see on that silverware? C B. And what kind of half wit spells Thomas with a C? I don't know. Well, I do. It's the kind of half-wit that's standing next to me. Now, which of your ancestors owned that silver chalice? If you get this one wrong, there will be serious consequences, boy. Um... Jesus, Dad! I'll say this one thing from my father. His style of parenting has always been consistent. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily good. You managed to force open the locked drawer of your writing desk... Of the writing desk. Inside you find pages of poetry penned in your sister's handwriting. They seem to be love letters penned to an unidentified female from the descriptions. You would guess it's the new mate. Interesting. Take one of the poems. Oh, I can only take two. No, on second thoughts, let's not do that. Oh, interesting. We gotta find our sister. I think that's a good plan. Let's go through this door. Oh, that goes downstairs. Never mind. I'm gonna go into this room. Is this where my sister is? Sister. Hi. I see you made it, Aaron. Forgive me if I don't stand. Your mere presence has almost given me a heart attack. Oh, it's Mother! Mother just looks like she's super young. Hello, Mother. Please sit down if you want to talk properly, Aaron. I don't want to crane my neck looking up at you. Fine. I'll, I'll sit down. 
Please sit down if you want to talk properly. I'm, I'm working on it. So, Aaron, you finally managed to make it up here for a visit. Please tell me you aren't just here to cause trouble. I'm here to make amends. Trouble is what you all deserve. Ooh. Whatever do you mean? I have no idea what you mean, Mother. I'm here to celebrate Father's birthday is all. I certainly hope that is the case. This family has been through enough. I hope you've been up to see your sister yet. She has been going through an unusually difficult time recently. Christ, what's wrong with her this time? Will she be okay? You sound worried. Do you think it's serious? I've not seen her this bad in a long time. Do you remember that summer when she, with the razor, in the bathroom? Yes, I remember. That was the last time I remember seeing her like this, so yes, to answer your question, I'm worried. Anyway, you should go and talk to your father if you haven't already. Wish him a happy birthday. Oh, and at least try to sound like you mean it. You know what, mother? No! Screw dad. That friggin' sucks. That beat me. That can can choke on it. I, I got some got some uh uh evidence. The leather taw. Okay, let's let's find our sister. Let's talk to her. You enter the surreal atmosphere of your sister's room. Mirrors of various sizes cover the walls, creating the eerie illusion of a crowded space. Hi, sister. Aha! I thought I smelled a rat. Have you come to see me, little rat? I'm not a rat, I'm your brother. It takes a rat to smell a rat. How are you feeling? Well, let's go ahead with, uh, it takes a rat to smell a rat. My, you do have a keen sense of smell if you notice my scent. Perhaps you are the rat here. I'm nothing like a rat, filthy, filthy creatures. You used to have a pet rat, don't, didn't you? Remember what I did to him? Oh, how he squeaked. Such great pain for such a little creature. What did you want to talk about me, little rat? <sighs> I'm going to make you pay for everything. Well, let's not give it away right away. Mother seems very worried about you. Mother says your condition has been getting worse. My condition? What condition? I don't have a condition. You want to have me sent away, don't you? Well, it won't work. It won't, I tell you. Go away. I don't want to speak to you anymore. Okay. I'll, I'll go away. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out something. Hopefully. We'll see. Okay, what's going on in this room? I'm kind of curious. Ooh, you step inside your former bedroom, now a simple guest room. Most of the old furniture has vanished. Probably thrown on a bonfire knowing your father. Hmm. What's this? There's at least one item of yours remaining in your former room. Your old fencing sword. At least this is a weapon which you're very well practiced. Um. Leave the sword where it is for now, or take the sword. I kind of feel that a sword... You know what? Take the sword. Are you sure you want to take the sword? Remember, you can only pick two items. Yes, I'm sure. You find there's no way you can conceal this large weapon on your person without causing suspicion. Perhaps if you had kept your coat on. Oh, mm, yeah, that would have made sense. This water was vacant and barren. Okay. So, I think we explored the mansion. Actually, there's another door. Let's go in here. Maybe we can find an interesting kind of weapon for our use in there. Let's see, your parents' room has not changed in years. The remains of frozen time capsule of a childhood you would sooner forget. Well then, it's just an old chair. Well, you, you, you just, you stop calling it just an old chair. Oh, memories. What's going on? It's their bedroom, isn't it? George said you wanted to see me, mother. Yes, your sister will not be returning to St. Mary this year, Aaron. Her condition has become too serious. I see. Okay. Have you nothing to say beside that, Aaron? No, nothing. This is precisely what I wanted to talk to you about. This silly feud with your sister must stop. Why do you think your condition keeps getting worse? Perhaps it's because you refuse to even acknowledge her. She killed Henry. For heaven's sake, Aaron, it was only a rat. He was my friend. I should never have allowed you to keep it in the first place. If you must blame someone, blame me. Will you forgive your sister? Never. Very well, Aaron. You leave me no choice. I will have to speak to your father about this. <gasps> Mother. Well, this is a screwed up family. This house always brings back far too many memories. Okay, what's going on here? It's only once you slide the top drawer open that you remember this is where your father keeps his shotgun. The shiny barrel all seems to call to you. Guns are certainly noisy, but efficient weapons. Take the shotgun. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, I can't conceal it because I'm not wearing my coat. Hmm. I should look into the wardrobe while I'm at it. Okay, coat. That might be a thing for another playthrough. You go for the wardrobe, but find nothing apart from clothes. Your mother's excessive collection of jewelry. Okay, I need to find a second item I'm going to be using. There is the basement, and I'm really intrigued by the basement. Let's see what we can uh, make happen here. Oh my, this dusty old wine cellar is where your father likes to practice billiards. The laundry room is next door, and beyond that is the servant's quarters. Okay, a billiards cue belonging to your father lies across the table. This could certainly serve as an unorthodox murder weapon. Take the cue. Yes, I'm sure, but I can't conceal it without my coat. 
We need a murder weapon that's not that huge. You find nothing in these drawers but useless cleaning supplies. Hmm, what's going on here? There's nothing in here but with laundry. Nothing in here but with laundry. What's going on here? Oh, another room. A broken mirror sits upon the maid's desk. Odd star, it belongs to your sister and the maid has been hiding it here after accidentally breaking it. A shard of glass from the mirror would be a padding murder weapon. Oh yes, take the broken glass. Remember, you can only take uh, two objects. You shake, take the sharpest piece of broken glass and hide it on your person for later. Oh, I think it's dinner time. Again, a bell invites me. This time to dinner, it seems. Oh my, dinner is served. Let's do this, guys. I don't, I don't know what's happening now. Kind of curious. All right, Sophia, could you come in here for a moment? Yes, ma'am. Pour me some more wine. Yes, ma'am. But, madam. Oh, what is it, George? Good question. I must protest. It has always been my duty to pour the wine at dinner. Oh, well, I don't want to cause any trouble. Nonsense. What does it matter, George? Stop being overly pedantic. But I... Mm, don't you think you had enough, mother? Do let the staff speak to you like that. Come on, let George pour the wine. He just wants to look down your dress. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna say let George pour the wine. Just let him pour the damn wine, would you? It's his job. You stay out of it, boy. If your mother wants the girl to pour the damn wine, then your girl will pour the damn wine. Of course, sir. My apologies. An interfering riddle lad, riddle. Little rat, isn't he, daddy? God, I hate this family already. Yes, he is. Why can't you ever keep your mouth shut, boy? <sighs> Not now. Don't lose your temper, father. Maybe you're the one who needs to shut his mouth. Oh my! Yeah, how, how about you? You need to shut your mouth for a change, father, before I come over there and do it for you. Aaron! Threaten your own father, would you? You hold that tongue, boy, not another word. Sophia, could you come here, please? Yes, Miss Jennifer. I just wanted to say that was the loveliest meal I've ever tasted. I don't know how you do it, you cunning pixie. You're too kind, miss. Of course, I will have tea and cakes for you in the drawing room, as usual after dinner. Oh, you're so good to me, you sweet thing. So very, very good to me. None of me. I'm full. I wouldn't mind some of your hot cakes. Hot cakes? Oh, my. Uh, would you stop flirting with each other? Sophia isn't interested in your advances, sister. I wouldn't mind. You know what? Let's let's be let's be ah, greasy as a frig. I wouldn't mind some of your hot cakes. Hot cakes? And why haven't I been offered a serving of your sweet buns, Sophia? Aaron, leave the poor girl alone. Anyway, let's not forget why we're here today. To celebrate your father's birthday. Such a very important occasion for us all. You are so dear to us, Malcolm. Happy birthday, Daddy. Indeed, happy birthday, Father. Let's hope it will be one to remember. Oh, doing the deed. Now is the time to quickly plan any items of evidence you have. To do so, simply enter the desired room and select the item from the inventory. When you're ready, enter the drawing room to do the deed. Okay. Good question. Okay, I do not know where the drawing room is. I assume it's down here. Um, what's going on here with this table? The wooden side table is currently empty. Can I can I place it here? I'm not entirely sure what's going on. What about the clock? You recall the old grandfather clock? Hmm. Honestly, I do wonder what I can do here. I need to plant some uh, some evidence. So let's go to my little sister's room or big sister, for all I know. And let's see if I can place something. Okay, there's nothing of interest around your sister's bed. Nope, ornate clocks, nothing. Oh, here, here we go. You don't have time to search your sister's wardrobe right now. Oh, hmm, okay. So many mirrors. I do not know where I could possibly put that evidence. I'm currently just trying to figure that out. Ah, the old bed. I shouldn't place any kind of evidence into my room. That barely makes any sense. But my father's room, that would make sense. We do have the sharp glass. You get down on all fours and peek underneath your parents' bed, but find nothing under there. <sighs> now it's hardly time to be rummaging through that. Oh, items! There you go, the taws. Yes. Okay. When your father used to beat you, you have... Uh, you never even repeated the old cliche, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Do you want to plant this item in this room? Yes. Plant it in this room. I don't know how this is... You decided to place the item in the wardrobe. That should be easy enough for the police to find. I'm not entirely sure how that is going to be evidence. It's just in their room. I guess this is not going to work out really well. We'll have to have to think that through better next time. Are you sure you want to enter the drawing room once inside? There's no turning back. Yes. You see Jennifer staring out the window ahead of you, lost in one of her strange moods. She hasn't noticed you enter the drawing room. Now it's the time. It's the time, ladies and gentlemen. Du -du 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 -du. Choose the murder weapon. Oh, bare hands or broken glass. 
Hmm. I kind of want to use the bare hands. But I'll go with the broken glass. Your sister cries out in surprise as you grab her from behind and you quickly muffle those cries with one hand before pressing the shot of broken glass against her throat. She struggles valiantly as you cut her throat open, but you manage to hold her in place until she finally goes limb. You drop her lifeless body to the ground along with the broken glass. It's time to leave this room before your deed is discovered. Alright, she's dead. I'm leaving. Oh, I have only eight seconds? Okay, we gotta be fast about this. I'm going upstairs. And I'm going into... Uh, her room, how about that? It sounds like my deed has been discovered. Oh my, it sounds like my deed has been discovered. Yeah, nothing new. I'm in her room. The time is out. Over, I mean. Let's see what happens now. Hmm. Yep, there's some blood left. I guess I'll be... Is the, is the police here, or...? Good evening, everyone! I'm Chief Inspector Winston Lewis! I understand that this is a difficult time for your family. You're damn right it is! I want to know what you're doing wasting time in here while my daughter's killers are still out there. Well, Mr. Bruce, we have found no evidence of forced entry and nobody was seen entering or leaving the house. It would seem entirely possible that the killer is in the room. What? No! That seems highly unlikely, Inspector. Perhaps it is. However, in order to follow protocol, I will have to interview each of you in turn. Mr. Bruce, would you like to meet in the library first? <sighs> Mrs. Bruce, I suppose so. Hmm. The interview. Okay, thank you for joining me in here, Mr. Bruce. I'm sure this won't take long. Before we begin, I will need to search a person. Best get those formalities out of the way. Is this really necessary? I'm afraid so. Turn around, please. Hmm. Now that's out of the way. Let's move on to the interview. Wait, did I have the... I wonder if I still had the weapon on my hand. As you know, I've already spoken to everyone else who was present in the house at the time of your sister's death. We also have to now complete our initial search of the house, but we'll get to that later. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? First of all, we'll run through all the activities since your arrival. The maid said that you and the butler arrived shortly after 7 o'clock and she greeted you at the door. She says that you mentioned during your conversation that you were not on good terms with your family. Oh shit. It's no secret that I detest my family. Okay, let's play with open cards here. You should already know by now that I can't stand my family. That doesn't mean I killed my sister. Of course not, Mr. Bruce, but it's worth noting, wouldn't you agree? The maid says that you made several lewd comments and advances towards her during your conversation. This leads me to question your character, I'm afraid. Uh, of course I did. Have you seen the maid? Absolutely. Wouldn't you have done the same? She's a pretty little thing after all. No, I can't say that I have. It's worth noting that the butler also has commented on your inappropriate behavior towards the mate. Later, you went to speak to the mate again, which is curious. Why did you decide to visit the kitchens? Um, to make sure my family was treating her well? Isn't it obvious I was pursuing the mate? Why do you think? I want to see more of the mate, a lot more. Hmm, I see. You'll forgive me for suggesting that seems rather le lecherous? I understand you made some unwanted advance towards the mate in the kitchen, but later apologized for your behavior. Yes, I realized it was inappropriate. I'm afraid I misread the signals. I was a mistake. That thus happened, Mr. Bruce. However, this was not the first time you have been inappropriate towards her. Later on, you had a conversation with your mother, Gloria, in the parlor. She says you spoke briefly about your sister. Apparently, you seemed quite concerned about her well-being. Well, we were worried my sister might attempt suicide. Actually, I was especially concerned. Uh, I wasn't or I was more worried about my mother's mental state. I was more worried about my mother's mental state. Yeah, she seems tired and desperate. I'm sure that dealing with my sister for so many years has taken its toll on her. Your mother was behaving quite usually, unusually then. She was not herself. I see. You went to see your father in the library, I understand. Your conversation became quite heated. My father always had a temper. Of course it did. My father's an irritating man. Of course I thought the conversation was civil. Nope. Yeah, he's an irritating man. He always had a temper. Let's go with that. Has a very short fuse. Many of our conversations go that way. Would you say he has a violent temper? Absolutely. I see, that's good to know. You discussed the prospect of you moving back to Dunshield. You said you would only move back if your sister was placed in psychiatric care. Yes, I wanted her gone from this house. For her own well-being, of course. I only had the best interest at heart. She belonged in care. You may be right, Mr. Bruce. However, you may seem to be the only one who felt that way. Your father also told me that you threatened him with physical violence during your conversation. That's not true. He's lying. Yes, but he threatened me first. He threatened to beat me, so I threatened him back. Are you in the habit of threatening old men, Mr. Bruce? Well, my father can handle himself, trust me. I see. Okay, this has gone so off the rails. Jesus! Did you speak to your sister before dinner? Ah, uh, yes I did! I went to her room to see her. I see, and what did you discuss with her? Ah, <sighs> nothing at all. She just insulted me and left. Well, we discussed her illness and her obsessions. We spoke about her condition. I was aware that she was going through a particular difficult time. Did she seem distressed to you? Yes, you could say that. She was not in a good place, mentally speaking. 
I see. Let's move on to the events that took place during dinner. I understand there was an argument involving the butler. Oh my, you just felt uh, he was, uh, he felt, wait, you felt he was being threatened, treated unfairly. Hmm. I was just trying to stir things up, really. My family always treats the servants poorly. Someone has to stand up for the servants around here. My family treats them like dirt. Indeed, it was good of you to do so, Mr. Bruce. There was an argument between you and your father, and you threatened him. <sighs> yes, and he'd better watch his back. It was more than a threat. It was a promise. Oh, my. You seem like quite the violent person, Mr. Bruce. Apparently, you made a rather lecherous comment towards the maid. Of course, she's a real stunner, that girl. She can bend over my plate anytime. Oh my. Mr. Bruce, please keep your vulgar thoughts to yourself. Now I need to ascertain your location at the time of your sister's death. Where were you when you heard of the scream? I was upstairs in my uh, Jennifer's bedroom. I was in Jennifer's bedroom. I see, and why were you in your sister's room? I was concerned about her. After the recent behavior, I was worried about her. I was looking for any evidence that she was. Yes? That she was feeling suicidal. I see. As I said earlier, we have completed our initial search of the property. What's going on? A search turned out any items which gave me cause to suspect anyone in particular. I'm curious about the murder weapon. The broken glass seems to have come from one of your sister's murders. We found the rest of it in the maid's room. However, we can't rule out suicide, especially given your sister's mental condition and her obsession with mirrors. It's all very interesting. I will be completely honest with you, Mr. Bruce. Frankly, your behavior leading up to the sister's death concerns me a great deal. While there's some suspicion regarding your father, I don't currently regard him as a serious suspect. I'm slightly curious about the mate, but I doubt she was involved in this. Despite any questions marks, question marks about your mother, I don't think for a moment that she did this. The possibility of suicide must be considered, although I'm personally unconvinced. Now, for as what happens next, I'm placing an arrest on suspicion of the murder of your sister. It is possible that an inquest might return a verdict of suicide. We'll see. Oh no. We've been arrested. So I guess we got caught. As the only person to be arrested, you remained the prime suspect in the case. The evidence against you was overwhelming at the trial. It did not take very long for the jury to return a guilty verdict. You were given a life sentence for the murder of your sister and would be spending the rest of your life sleeping behind bars. In your dank little cell, there was nowhere to hide or escape from the nightmares when they came. The deed itself had taken possession of your soul and perhaps this was her final revenge. Well, this didn't really work out well, but I would love to actually pull off that murder. This is a really interesting game. And as you can see, we played for the whole thing. I failed, obviously, but I would like to try that again. Let me know if you guys would like to try again, if you guys would like to follow along, and I'll do more. In any case, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. I'm Weasel. I'm out, and I hope to see you around. Bye-bye. Yo. Hello? Ah, there it is. Gotcha. Look at this Fisher Price walkie talkie. Hello? Ah, I get to select the dialogue. Sweet. Hello? It's Henry Wright. Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? What? Excuse me?